Hello and welcome to our latest webinar. Um, Chris, who you'll see in a minute, and myself, thought it'd be useful to take you through the different ways of using laptops. Um, I think a lot of us have been working at home perhaps a little bit longer than um, than we anticipated, and maybe it's going to be going further. So we thought it might be useful just to sort of show things you can do to try and help. So really, I think starting off with maybe just arriving at home on your dining room table with your laptop, maybe sitting on a fairly standard chair, and the obvious problems that that might have for your, for your neck and for your arms. And the first simple thing to do, I would say, is to try and split where you're looking and your hands. So, I mean, you could use a box or something similar and then use a separate keyboard and mouse. But often the easiest thing is to use a laptop stand and then that way you can get the screen at a decent height and you can work much more comfortably. Still at the wrong height because my elbows are lower than the, the top so actually I can, I've got a wedge and a, and a back support here. So if I put a wedge in and I use a back support actually I've now got some good back support and I'm actually at a much better height. Now again, you may not have a wedge or a back support, but you can use cushions and pillows to do something similar. So really with some very simple things, you've got a much better way of working. Now I'm going to hand over to Chris now, who's going to talk about other options we have available, apart from the ones I've used now. Chris, do you want to come and show people? Thank you, Catherine. Hello everybody, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to start talking about laptop packs uh, and also maybe some packs for services as well, but as Catherine said, a pack is a, is a brilliant and very cost effective way uh, of getting set up more ergonomically at home uh, and, and especially um, early on with lockdown we were inundated with requests for, for laptop packs. Um, there are lots of different options on the market, uh, essentially a pack's made up of a stand, a keyboard and a mouse. Um, and I'll just show you what some of them do. So this is a, an example of a, of a very simple stand. It has diff seven different height settings on it. Uh, and then you fold it down flat uh, and put away at the end of the day once you finish working along with the keyboard and the mouse. Um, you have other options for laptops. This one, for example, has a uh, document holder built into the front of it, which works really nicely. Still doing the same sort of thing, so it's elevating the height of the screen up to a much better height. So the screen is now at eye level as opposed to working hunched over a laptop, which is really bad for you for prolonged periods of time. Um, so again, that's a really good setup there now. Uh, or there are some of the other options on the market for Surface Pros. So the problem with the Surface Pro is um, the screen doesn't actually stay upright, so you need to take the screen off and then you can use one of these stands, which again now elevates the height of the screen up to a much better height with a Bluetooth keyboard or, or Bluetooth mouse. Um, I think probably the most important thing to say is there are lots of different options on the market. It depends what tech you're using as to what the best solution is, so really talk to your account manager uh, and also you need to think about stock availability. So um, currently we have around 6,000 stands, 6,000 keyboards and 6,000 mice in stock uh, and our purchasing team are working all the time to, to make sure that those stock levels are, are maintained uh, because there's inevitably going to be another run on these packs now in the, in the, in the um, short term. Um, but there's lots of different options out there. Talk to your account manager uh, and they will help you guide, guide you to the best solution. So for our second setup, we're looking at a more dedicated workspace. You know, people have been working from dining room tables or kitchen tops and the heights can be wrong or they don't have enough space or they just feel that, you know, they need to separate home and work. So what I've got here is a home worker's desk and a chair. So as you can see, quite simply, I can actually get myself in a good setup. And what I've got here also is a stand that works not only for the laptop, but actually also works for a surface as well. So really quite a flexible way of getting a good setup at a good height. Now once again, I'm going to hand over to Chris, who's going to talk you through some of the more important features of some of this equipment. 
Chris. I'm just going to get out of your way with all my equipment, and off you go. Very mobile, Catherine. I know. Thank you. So if we look at maybe one of the, the first important areas of the workstation here is the chair. Um, so as things have progressed longer and longer, people are now requiring better seating at home. Uh, and there are obviously lots of different chairs and lots of different options on the market. Uh, actually, Postrack have around about 2,000 chairs in stock at the moment. Uh, and this particular chair I'm sitting on is from our home worker um, chair range. Um, we've got around about 1,000 of those in stock. Uh, and we have capacity to make about 300 of those a day, uh, which, we're, which we're currently manufacturing. So uh, I think that's an important thing to consider when you're looking at potentially pr um, providing um, chairs for your staff. It's thinking about actually the stock and, and can, can people actually get the, the chairs out to, out, out to your members of staff. So if we just look at, look at some of the features this chair has built into it. Um, obviously you've got height, uh, so very simple, up and down. Um, then you've got, on this chair, you've got the ability to alter the whole angle of the chair um, and lock that off in any position. Uh, and you can then also alter the angle of the backrest independently to the seat pan. Uh, but again, that's locked off, so it's not like that's um, in sort of free flow, so it gives you good support to your lower back and your pelvis. Um, the backrest is adjustable, so you can adjust the height of the backrest. It's got a ratchet system, so you go all the way to the top, so then drop it down to the bottom, and then find a comfortable position in between. Uh, and you also have an inflatable lumbar support, so you can increase that or decrease that throughout the course of the day. Uh, it's surprising how many people do use that. Um, and then on this side, you've got seat slide adjustments, which is really important because you can then adjust that to different sizes of people. Um, so that's really nice and adjustable. Uh, and then finally, the armrests can adjust in height and also in depth. So um, what you don't want to do is obviously get a chair where, where you have armrests that are not adjustable and then you then get in the way of the workstation because that can cause quite a few problems for people. Um, so yeah, lots of different options on, on chairs, but again, I would suggest talking to your account manager and really think about what stock availability, obviously what's the price point that you're looking to put something in at as well, uh, and your account manager can work with you to try and um, identify the correct solution for your business. Uh, if we then move on to desking, um, I'll just stay sitting down actually for the time being. So the uh, desks, um, obviously one of the big things we're hearing is space or lack of space at home. Um, that again is, is causes quite a few problems. Um, so this is from our home desking range. You'll notice it's not massively big. So it's 90 centimeters wide by 60 centimeters deep. Um, but it, it fits into the, into the home quite nicely. It comes in um, two different color options. So you can have a white top or uh, a black top and there's different options on the, on the legs as well. Um, we have around about 350 of the home worker desks in stock at the moment. And again, it's something we're constantly looking to, looking to put into stock uh, because as time has gone on and, and this has become a more permanent situation, so we're saying, Desking has again the increased in terms of uh, how many clients are asking us about it. I'm just going to show you quickly how, how the desk works. One of the great features about this desk is actually you can pack it away at the end of the day. So um, you just flick it on its head uh, and then you literally just fold the legs in. So it's really easy. And again, the great thing uh, about all of the home working desks that we actually provide. Uh, is they're really easy to assemble, uh, which is important. So they come free packaged, and all you literally do is take it out of the box and away you go. But that is fantastic, uh, and it's not particularly heavy. It's around about 13 kgs, so you can put that away at the end of the day and leave it um, in, a, in a cupboard or whatever, uh, but they work really well. So the next product we're going to look at today is called the Oploft, which is a sit-stand platform. Uh, everything we've looked at so far has obviously been relatively static, so people sat down for prolonged periods of time. So ideally what we want to try and do is to incorporate as much movement into the workstation as possible. Uh, actually you'll find with people working from home, the hours tend to be maybe even longer than in the office because you don't have that natural commute into work. Uh, so people can sit for really prolonged periods of time. So something that introduces movement uh, and blood flow uh, is a really great solution. Um, and the Oploft platform is brilliant for that uh, because 
First of all, it's very lightweight, it's very thin as you can see, uh, but it, transform, it transforms a desk, a standard desk, into a sit-stand work, work area. So I'll just show you how it works. Uh, and the Oploft has 14 different height adjustments. So um, whatever height you want it at, you just lock it off, um, or you can go right up to the, to the top right here, uh, and you can then see you're then working in a really good posture um, but it also allows you to constantly change the way that you work. So ideally you want to be moving from a sit-stand, uh, from a sit to a stand working um, um, pattern throughout the course of the day. Um, I, I also mentioned it's, it's great and very transportable, so I'm just going to pass these things to Catherine over here. So I'll just pass you my bits. Thank you, Catherine. Let's take this all off. Uh, thank you. Um, and here you can see how easily you can just take the Oploft off of the desk and then pack it away maybe at the end of the day. So it is light, it's about uh, 12 kilograms, and that just fits into a cupboard or even down by the side of the sofa, uh, which a lot of clients have mentioned they're now using it in that, uh, in that way. Um, but it's a very portable uh, and, and um, that's solution that introduces sit-stand into the workspace. Uh, we have around about 500 of them in stock at the moment, and we do another 500 in stock in about three weeks' time. Uh, so we have plenty available as well. So again, contact your account manager if you think this would be a good solution. Right, for our final setup, I want to show you actually something that's not dissimilar from what I'm lucky enough to have at home. I think a lot of us are looking forwards and looking to thinking we are going to be working at home a lot more or just regularly. So I think we're looking to set up some workstations. And, and here, what I've got here is a desk. It's not too big, doesn't take up too much of a distance. The great thing is I've got two screens. I've got quite used to using two screens and I find actually it really helps my productivity. I've got my laptop on a stand um, and actually at home I have it on another monitor arm with an adaption, which, uh, which you can get. So I've got my two screens. I've got plenty of desk space. The other great thing about this is this obviously is a, a sit-stand desk. So like Chris was talking about with the other sit-stand option, is that I'm able actually to look after my well-being by being able to move at the same time. If I'm taking conference calls, I can use the screens. And it really, it does provide a very simple, healthy way to work. So really, that's, I suppose, the ultimate way to, to have your, your workstation at home good for productivity, good for well-being. We've talked a lot of things um, in these, these sort of four short little, little uh, videos that we've done. I'm sure you've got lots of questions. First of all, you know, so reach out to your account manager. I'm sure they'll be happy to help. But if you've got any other questions, you don't know who your account manager is, head to our website. We have things like live chat. You can email us. But do you know what? For people like me, there's also a telephone number. So if you have any questions, just give us a call and we'll try and answer your questions. Welcome everyone and uh, thanks for joining us for another webinar um, with our senior economist Catherine and product expert Chris. Uh, two familiar faces I'm sure if you've uh, attended other webinars we've done or used Posture over the years. Um, hopefully you will have already seen the pre-recorded elements of the webinar that was sent beforehand. Um, we've had some questions in already so thank you for those and please do fire any questions in as we go along and we will do our best to answer them for you. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this is being recorded, so if you have any technical problems or <clears throat> if something crops up during the webinar, we'll be sending it around afterwards to look at. Uh, we'll also be meeting our DSE specialist advice team of Graham and Vicky. Um, Graham's birthday today down in Cornwall, so uh, happy birthday to Graham. I'm sure you've got big plans sorted for later. Um, so without further ado, we'll get cracking with some of the questions we've had in. Uh, and like I say, please fire them in as, as we go and um, we'll answer them. So I've had a question, uh, do you have any free resources clients can uh, use to help at this time? Probably one for you, Catherine. Yes, actually, um, we've worked quite hard on uh, trying to have uh, resources available, um, both before all the home working and, and all these sort of strange things we're having to cope with. Um, and yes, we have both some of our pre-existing webinars um, that, that, that people can use and um, quite often people do share them. We, we have some, we got two particular ones on home working, both that were, one was recorded at the start when everything sort of kicked off and one is more like a sort of check in and make sure how people are going. 
Um, and then we also have some paper resources. Um, we have um, some learning resources, which are PDFs, and we have some infographics. Please go to our website if you want some free, free resources. And in the green band at the top, you'll find a little uh, bar that says help and advice with the triangle. If you click on the down arrow, you will find where all our free resources are. If you can't find any resources or there's some resources that you think would be really helpful, um, please just get in touch with any of us, you know, the DSE advice team, your account manager or email anybody at Postrite and we will help you find them. Great, thanks Catherine. Um, another question we've got, we are considering giving our staff a budget to go and spend on equipment. Have many of your other clients done this and how have you been able to help? Probably for Chris that one. Yeah, thanks Matt. Um, so yes, quite a lot of clients have actually been giving their um, staff um, budget now to go and spend. We have done a few bits for various clients. What, what we can set up is actually uh, we can set discount codes up um, and then we can also create um, unique um, landing pages for our website. So you can still control what um, access your staff have to what equipment. Um, but um, they also benefit from a corporately agreed discount with us because they can use the discount codes and enter them in, enter them into the website. Um, so it's great and they, they can then obviously you order the equipment themselves online using their own card. Uh, so that does work quite nicely. What I would say, um, some clients who have, have actually gone down this route already, you, you do lose an element of control doing it this way um, so you can't necessarily guarantee obviously what a, what the quality of the equipment is that your staff will end up purchasing because um, obviously they could they could potentially buy equipment from anywhere um, and, I, and I have had quite a few clients come back and actually say oh look this member of staff has, has bought a piece of equipment it's now either broken or it's not fit for purpose uh, and that is a bit of a challenge obviously because you know where what, you know, who, where's, whose responsibility is that really? You've given them budget to go and spend, they've bought something and maybe isn't fit for purpose. So you do need to be a little bit tr careful on that front. What I would say is that the, the companies who've, who've been the most successful, I would say, at, 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 with this is, is giving their staff budget, but then also maybe giving them guidance around where they can purchase equipment from. Um, so they've really sort of heavily communicated out to their staff, look, this is a good place to order equipment because of this particular reason. So um, yeah, that that's that's worked well for them. Um, what I would others what I would also say was just our, whilst we're on um, ordering processes because um, we do get asked this a lot, um, is there other there are other ways to order from us as well. So if if you as a company want to pay for the equipment, then there's lots of different options around that. We can set up bespoke order forms for you, which you, which you can, uh, which your staff can order from, and you can again select what equipment they have access to. And those order forms can have purchase order, um, the ability to put purchase order numbers in, cost centers in. Um, you can obviously also order equipment via microsites or punch out catalogs. Um, and also there are static catalogs you can load onto your, and if you have a purchasing system like a Reba or Oracle, you can load things onto systems as well. So there's lots of different options in terms of ways, ways to order. So I'd suggest just getting in touch with your account manager if you're trying to set something up and then we can make it try and try and work for work for you as a business. OK, thanks, Chris. Um, <clears throat> Catherine, <laughs> probably a question you've been asked uh, a million times over the last six months or so. What are your top tips for home workers? Oh, top tips. Um, I think for most people, the first big mistake people make is trying to work on you know, tablets or phones or laptops and they land up hunched over with, with a lot of neck pain. So I think my first top tip is for most people is get away of separating the screen from the from the keyboard. Um, obviously, if you're somebody who's not inputting, that's not so important. But if you are somebody who is inputting, you know, to do that is is so vital and I mean you can do that with something like a biscuit tin but you still need to get yourself a separate keyboard and mouse um, and um, I think you know as we go along we probably need a slightly more permanent uh, way of doing that um, but that's my top tip number one but top tip number two is keep moving the worse the position is the more people need to move and if they do that they will remain healthy and productive 
Can I also, whilst I'm on camera, take uh, an opportunity just to add to, to Chris's last uh, point? Um, I'm actually working um, with uh, another colleague of ours to actually try and provide a sort of a specification, you know, what equipment should do what type um, document to try and give people some guidance that maybe they can pass on to to their staff and I hope that that's going to be available within either today or, or tomorrow um, and we'll be putting that on the website too so if people would find that useful then obviously that will be there too sorry to uh, butt in on that one but I, I thought that might be useful to, to to let people know no problem thanks Catherine um, keep your questions coming in we've had a few more so um... This one is about deliveries, quite pertinent. Um, how are your deliveries going to be affected by the second national lockdown? Do you want me to say that? Yeah, OK, thanks, Matt. Um, hopefully not massively. Uh, we have, uh, there was obviously a couple of different delivery options with Posture, either courier or hand delivery service. The, the couriers are, are still operating absolutely fine. so. Um, don't anticipate there being any problems there. Uh, with the courier delivery service, um, chairs and desks, they do um, arrive in a box and it's down to the individual to, to build them themselves. As Catherine's already mentioned, we've got quite a lot of good um, resources on our website and there's lots of videos in terms of how to assemble all of the, all, all of the chairs on there. Um, so again, we can signpost you to where they are, uh, but they're very easy to assemble. So the couriers shouldn't be affected at all. Um, a hand delivery service, um, uh, obviously what normally happens is um, we will deliver the, the, the chairs and the desks and come in and build them in the person's home. That's obviously not going to happen in the short term. Um, so chairs will be built, uh, they'll be assembled, they'll be taken to the front door. Uh, there's a phone call that happens as well um, before the chair is delivered uh, and it's just agreed between the individual and, and the delivery company exactly how, you know, how they feel in terms of um, what they want to happen with the, with the delivery. Uh, and then the, the, the chair will be um, left on the doorstep and then can be demonstrated as well to the individual um, on the doorstep if, if required or, or just left. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully not a massive difference in, in service there. OK, thanks, Chris. Um, <clears throat> another one here. What are the most common issues you're hearing about? Probably again, Catherine or, or Chris, I don't know if you want to take that one. Um, I think I, I mean, I'll start off and then Chris can, can join in if he wants. Um, certainly um, at the start of uh, lockdown, we certainly um, saw a rapid increase in um, neck and upper back problems, which I think relates to the sort of the hunching over the laptop. And then sort of around sort of 10 to 12 weeks, we started to notice quite a, an increase in uh, lower back problems, I think, where people have been sitting on stools or things without um, a, a, a lot of um, lower back support. Um, then we've also had a certain amount of wrist problems, which I think often are due to getting the height wrong. So people don't get the right height of their chairs to what they're working on. And so the, the wrist and the forearm then takes awkward movements to, to try and compensate. Um, so, you know, the old suspects as far as using computers, but have come on in different waves, mainly due to the, the sort of portable equipment use, I think. Um, I also think that we're seeing a lot more because people are not taking their breaks and I think people are working quite long hours. So we're really asking quite a lot of our bodies and we've been at this for a while and it really starts to be taking a bit of a toll. Yeah, OK, thanks. Thanks, Catherine. <clears throat> um, we've had a couple more questions come in, so we'll, we'll get going with those. Um, are you going to do any face to face DSE workstation assessments? Do you want me to take yeah. that one? Can do, Catherine. OK, um, I, I would say our preferred method, obviously, with the, the state of the health of the nation at the moment is to do remote assessments where we can. Um, if there is a really good reason as to why the remote assessment can't take place. Um, sometimes we have people who've got visual or hearing problems um, or if there is an acute need, um, we do have safe processes in place and if we feel that the need is there, we will do some, but it will be with you know a good reason why and with very strict controls around it. So not as a routine, but if necessary, we will be there to support you and your staff. Great, OK. 
thanks thanks guys i think we'll, we'll come back to some more questions um maybe at the end if we've got time but we'll move on and meet vicky and graham part of the dse support team so um graham vicky um we'll see you momentarily as, as the camera pans over they're going to explain a bit about themselves and what they do and how they help our clients um and like i say if you've got any more questions for chris or catherine still send them through um all the dse team as we go along so Hi Graham, hi uh, hi Vicky. Um, got some questions for you guys to uh, f let everyone get familiar with you guys. Can you introduce yourself and give some background about your time at Posturite? So thanks for handing over. I'll I'll take this one. Um, so both of us have got backgrounds in in sort of working for Posturite over a number of years. So we have both kind of had that experience face to face with carrying out DSE assessments. So we've seen a whole wide range of clients in different environments. Um, and we've both kind of got those backgrounds in, in DSE and a real solid knowledge base of the products, having you know imp implemented those solutions. So our kind of role and, and expertise sits within that area. Yeah, I've been with Posturite for 11 years now. Um, and as with Graham, I was out and about on the road for eight years doing the face-to-face -face DSE assessments as well. Um, and switched to a home-based role uh, about three or four years ago and then still have that sort of wealth of product knowledge and DSE advice that we kind of gained on the road um, and, and having that that we can kind of rely on as uh, yeah just background expertise really. Good I'm back sorry about that guys my team's decided to have a, a little um, paddy <laughs> and uh, came back nice and quick so that's good. Um, Graham why was, uh, why was this role created? Yeah, so historically at Posturite, um, we kind of found as a business that most um, of our clients will kind of go directly to somebody that they know at Posturite. And sort of in the old days where we were quite a small sort of company and, and we've grown a lot in, in time, um, we found that it was getting more and more difficult for people to kind of get an answer from us quickly as our workloads and sort of custom increased. So really the, the DSE advice team was kind of created to kind of provide a, a single point for our clients to be able to contact us with those kind of generic queries you know looking for help with recommending a product for example um, just having someone that can give them a very quick answer or response to something that doesn't necessarily need to go through for example their account manager or a specific ergonomist it's yeah. just something where it's a kind of a central point for people where they can get a nice quick answer from somebody that's got the input and the knowledge of our kind of product range to be able to give that advice to people. So it's, it's trying to speed up how quickly we can give people the information and the help that they need and, and give them a little bit of reassurance that Posturite are here to help as much as we possibly can. So that was kind of really why we, we kind of created this role and this kind of team to, to give people that access to information and, and assistance. Great. Yeah, thanks, Graham. Um, so for trickier cases or more unusual recommendations, um, the website isn't an exhaustive list of things Posture offer, um, is it, Vic? No, it's a, a slimmed down version, basically. If we had everything we could possibly offer, um, it would just be a minefield to try and find what you're after. Yeah. So we're there to help with those trickier things, and maybe it's something that we don't recommend very often, or perhaps it's something a little bit more bespoke. Um, for example, our desk right, uh, height adjustable desks, we can do more bespoke sizes for people that aren't on the website as a, a matter of course, um, but it's just something that perhaps is maybe more for a specialist requirement. We can have a look into that for you. Might be things we don't sell very regularly, but it's something that we have access to. Um, and a lot of times we get that from um, you know, other DSE advisors thinking, I think this product should exist or something that does this, but I can't find it on your website. It might just be a case of, yes, it does. It's just not something we would sell a lot of, so it's not something that we advertise on there. But you can come by us, myself and Graham, and we can point that in the right direction for you or make an alternative recommendation. OK, yeah, great. Thank you, Bit. Um, <clears throat> how can you help in terms of choosing between two chairs for an end user, for example? Yeah, so I'll take this one. Um, it's quite a common thing that, uh, you know, we might get asked, you know, we've got two chairs that we're looking at and we want to kind of understand which one might be better suited. So what we kind of can offer as a DSE advice team is we can provide customers or clients with a, a measurement form and, and ask them to send measurements and some photos across so that we can help determine whether or not a chair is going to be suitably sized to support them accordingly. 
Um, so we can do this, you know, off the back of other assessments from occupational health companies to kind of help assist making sure that the sort of products or the chairs that are being recommended are, are going to be suitable because it's not uncommon um, in, a, in a written report to detail the specification of a chair without actually detailing down a certain model. Um, what we can do is, is look at that specification to determine exactly what the chair needs to have. So if it's a case of looking between two different models, we can kind of pick apart which is going to be best suited for the user using those images or measurements and kind of specifications. So we've, we've kind of got that information base and not product knowledge to be able to help people determine what, what they actually need to assist their end users. OK, yeah. And, and what about really intricate chair recommendations when something off the shelf won't necessarily fit the user? Yeah, I'll take this one. So we do have a huge range of chairs that are quote unquote off the shelf, but they're still obviously very adjustable for the user. You've got adjustable seat depth and backrest heights and that sort of thing. But it isn't unusual that someone won't fit within those measurements um, with it, within those specifications. Perhaps they might need a, a smaller seat pan if they're quite petite or a narrower seat pan um, or some bespoke adaptations like air cells or that sort of thing. So we have uh, access to a, the adapt range from Ergo Chair, which is a fully bespoke chair. Um, it's made entirely down to your detailed measurements um, or we can add and take bits away from it as adaptations as well. Um, but because there are so many options and you can pretty much change the chair to within an inch of its life, it can be a little bit of a minefield to know the options and what you need to add for each user um, and whether you're adding something that's not really going to add any value to the client, it's just going to add cost onto it and you don't really need it. Um, so, for example, there is uh, the option on an adapt chair to have higher armrest brackets, which if you put them on there and you didn't need them, your elbows would be up by your ears. But it's a good thing to have as an option if you've got someone with short arms, for example. So if you do want to recommend an adapt chair and you're a little bit put off by all the <laughs> bits and bobs you can add to it, we can certainly help with that and we can also match up to specific measurements as well. So if anything off the, as our off the shelf range isn't suitable, we can go down that bespoke route for you as well. OK, great. Thanks, Vic. Um, <clears throat> can you both recall a, a sort of typical case where you've been able to offer a solution? Yeah, right. I'll, I'll jump in with one that I dealt with earlier today, just as a good example. Um, we had a client come through to us asking for a particular support because a user had an upper limb deficiency so they found extreme difficulty in actually raising their, their right arm and obviously that causes some difficulty with using the keyboard and mouse. Um, speaking to the client directly you know we sort of suggested the option that on one of our chairs the RH Logic we have the 3R 3D armrest which actually works as a movable pad to support the weight of their kind of forearms so that it helps aid their movement and it just worked as a solution that the customer just wasn't aware was out there and, and available in terms of the ergonomic market. So again, it's just, you know, having that product knowledge and that base to be able to kind of apply and offer a solution just works really well. And, and I say that was earlier today. So we get a number of, you know, we could probably spend all day talking about options that we can offer. Great. Um, Vic, have you got any, any examples as well you can think of? Yeah, one that comes up as a very typical case is uh, via our live chat that myself and Graham Mann as well um, is people working from laptops or tablets and wanting to have that option of external keyboards and that sort of thing. Um, and as Catherine has mentioned, you can get by short term with biscuit tins and that sort of thing, but something that's a little bit more permanent for a tablet, if it doesn't have a attached keyboard to it, you can't often put it into a normal laptop stand because there's not got that resistance to keep it open. So we've had that a lot with people working from surfaces and that sort of thing. So we have specific tablet stands that we can recommend for that. And you often find with tablets that there's only one USB slot as well. So people get a bit confused about what can I attach? What can't I attach? Um, and I had one on live chat earlier today where I said, did you know that you can get a USB hub on our website that extends the amount of USB slots you've got? Um, so you don't have to go down the wireless route of equipment if you don't want to. You can just pop in this USB hub and away you go with maybe a keyboard mouse you already have. Um, so it's just offering that solution that maybe they haven't thought of a little bit out of the box of things that might be out there. Yeah, OK, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Well, hopefully everyone's found that really useful. And the all important question then, if, uh, if you do want to make use of uh, the DSC team, is how can people contact you guys? 
Yeah, so we're quite easily contactable. So we have, first of all, me and Vicky have a joint inbox that we operate. Um, the email address is dseadvice at postdrive.co.uk. So we can take any email queries and come back to customers directly. Um, we're also available on the website with our live chat feature. So if you're ever on our website in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little chat with us box. If you select that box, you'll see that you're able to kind of start a chat and myself and Vicky are usually on that throughout the day. So if you've got a quick query regarding a product or you know, a certain issue, you can get us easily by the website. It's quite handy because we can also share links with you whilst you're on the website and assist you in that way. Alternatively, if you want to speak to us over the phone, again, not a problem. We've got a specific number to get hold of myself and Vicky, and that number is 0345 345 Obviously, this is all being recorded, so you'll be able to play back, play that back if you need to get our details again. Great. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Well, we've got a few minutes left, I think, to take us up to, to the half hours. So um, we'll, we'll field some more questions that we've had in. Um, again, I guess any of you can jump in and, and answer these, but um, Chris, maybe you could answer this one. Uh, thoughts on how to ensure a remote DSE assessment is as effective as possible? Obviously, we've, we've been doing a lot of them remotely. So, um, yeah, can you give us a bit of a steer on that one? Yeah, thanks, Matt. It was a bit of a challenge, actually. Obviously, we went from doing lots of face to face assessments to, to, to obviously then having to go almost completely remote straight away. So we needed to look at what was the most, how do we deliver a, a, an effective um, assessment process? So one of the first things we did is we changed the referral process. So we put a little bit more responsibility back on to um, the individual that's having the assessment. So we asked them to send us more information up front now. So we get them to send us a few measurements and some photos of the workstation, which I think is um, you know, really important for the assessors to be able to work from. Um, we're also very keen to, to try and um, ensure there was some a bit more human interaction rather than it just being conducted via the phone. So. Um, we looked at setting all the assessments are conducted via Teams or, or Zoom or you know whatever, but ideally Teams. Um, so so I think I think that's really helped um, help that service and it builds some rapport with the individual and hopes it hopefully makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. And and also it allows our assessors if they need to they can ask to have a quick look at the workstation as well um, whilst they're doing the assessment. Uh, but also we all do we also do have the ability and as Catherine's already said. Um, you know, we, we can, if we if we feel necessary, we can escalate the assessment to a face to face assessment still. Um, but we have been conducting a, a, a serious number of assessments since the in, initial lockdown came in. And I don't think we've had many at all, a handful that we've had to then um, refer on to a, a follow up face to face assessment. So we've been pleasantly surprised, really, with the way that it's the, the way the service has gone. And there's also a knock on. Um, it's been quite beneficial in terms of lead times as well. You know, we can turn turn assessments around in two to three days now as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's, it's worked pretty well. OK, thanks, Chris. We've probably got time for, for one more. Um, I've had another one here. Do you recommend any kind of take a break software or app? So obviously a lot of people, especially when they're at home, are probably working longer hours and, and, and sitting down for, for longer than they might be in the office. So, yeah, we've we got any kind of software or apps or, or any other advice we can give on taking breaks? I think I think Office 365 might have some stuff built into it now. Um, so it's maybe worth checking that out, but definitely um, there's RSI Guard that we, um, I know, I know Postdoc used to supply a little bit, so that, that's one product on the market, so I'm definitely aware of. Um, but I think it's worth checking what our Office 365 has built into it as standard, because I think there might be some stuff in there. I don't know whether you know, Catherine. Um, I have to say, you're probably talking to the wrong person. <laughs> OK. Um, because I'm, I'm not, as you know, I'm a bit of a technophobe. I actually have a sand timer usually on my desk. Um, I also suggest to people write post-it notes as to when they should next take a break and stick them on their, their screen. Um, but one thing I do do if I know I have got a long day is I actually use the timer function on my phone um, or set myself a sort of a 45 minute um, go. If I know I'm going to get my head down and get on, then I mean, and that's probably as far as technically I go. Um, but but I do use my phone sometimes to, to provide me with reminders. OK, great. Well, thanks, guys. And 
talking of breaks, I think I might go and um, get a bit of vit vitamin D while the sun's still out down here on the south coast. I hope the weather's good with you wherever you are. Um, hopefully you get out to enjoy some fireworks in your back gardens this afternoon. Um, keep your eyes peeled for any more webinars. We're, we're running these quite frequently, so hopefully you've enjoyed it and found it useful. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time.